the hood champion boxing and sports and boxing you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Earl Spence and Ugas have a big fight coming up very soon. And there have been a few changes to their training camps. And there's a reason why they're making these changes. The big thing for Earl Spence is him having, for the first time, a nutritionist. Now, Earl Spence, for all of his previous fights, has focused solely on dieting, uh, making sure he has the proper vitamins, his rest schedule, his training schedule has been pretty much managed by himself and Derek James, but the nutrition piece has been managed by Earl Spence. So when he was cutting down from 190, 185 pounds to 147 when he would blow up in between fights, Earl Spence was putting in the road work and dieting and doing it all on his own. So he decided on this fight to put the jerk chicken down, the curry goat down, the little rice and beans, the plantain and all that, and, and hire a nutritionist and pick up more of the green veggies, you know, the, the fish, make sure you're getting his, um, the proper vitamins and, 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 and supplements. And that could make a big difference. And it's showing in their physiques, you know. He's, he's looking like a monster, Earl Spence. Ripped, happy to show it off. But the thing is, Yugis is doing the same thing. Proper diet, has a nutritionist, workout regimen. He's putting in the same amount of work. But Yugis has also done a bit more strength training. Because for him to get in there and really have, in my opinion, a chance against Earl Spence, who is strong, he punches in a high volume, his work rate is crazy all 12 rounds. Yugis is going to have to hit him with something to stop and slow him down. We know that Yugis is a very accurate puncher. He's a very skillful fighter, and he's out of Cuba. We know that he had a, a sound amateur pedigree, and he is just one of those boxers that gives people trouble because he has a different style. But he's very accurate, and he, he hits hard enough to, to make you respect him. But not sure he has the one-punch knockout power. It looks like he's been working on that in this camp, as you can see in his physique below. Uh, Yugis, is, Yugis isn't small. Yugis is in shape. Yugis looks strong. If he was to put another three, four bowls of a rose, a rose con pollo in his belly, Yugis would look a lot bigger, a lot more massive. He's just shredded, uh, shredded. There's no fat on him. There's absolutely none. So going into this fight, my question is, do you all think a nutritionist makes that much of a difference? Do you think bulking up makes that much of a difference in a fight? So I would have to say, I think having a good nutritionist makes a huge difference. One, it takes the stress off of the boxer from trying to figure out what to eat, when to eat. When you are able to pay, pay somebody to come into your camp and take that and manage that for you, that takes the headache away. That takes that it's one thing, one less thing for you to worry about. And that's what that does for you. Two, it makes sure that you're getting the right type of food for what you're focusing on. If you're trying to be a power lifter, your nutritionist, your nutritionist is going to make sure you're getting the right amount of carbs, the type, right, or the right amount of fats, the different type of fats, the right amount of protein based on um, what your, your goal is as far as lifting weights or building muscle. Uh, I know for a fact it's like one pound, one, one gram of protein per pound of body weight if you're just trying to remain shredded. Two, two grams of protein per pound of body weight if you're trying to increase your mass. So having a nutritionist with the right supplemental strategy, um, it pays dividends. It really does. Now, the, I think there are times where a nutritionist isn't really beneficial. And I say that as when a case where your skills just aren't enough against your opponent. Like Fernando Vargas, he changed up his, you know, well, he said he was juicing, but when he fought De La Hoya, he did not look like the same fighter. You see him um, um, when they were doing the, uh, the face-off and the weigh-in. Fernando Vargas was shredded. So got in the fight, he looked good, he looked strong. And he looked good and strong when he was going down on his damn back too, when De La Hoya hit him with that killer, that killer left hook. He got him against those ropes and referee to stop the fight. So the, the, whatever nutrition, nutrition strategy he was following, 
whether he was taking you know the steroids or whatever, it didn't help because skills pay the bills. Sometimes you're just outgunned and you're outclassed. But I think had he not used that nutritionist and uh, whatever the steroids, he probably wouldn't even have got past the first four rounds. To be honest with you, at that first round he gave De La Hoya hell. De La Hoya was like, man, this guy's strong. Uh, when you look at Daniel Jacobs bringing on you know, his buddy from Long Island, man, uh, Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri, that's his thing, man. He is actually, I think he has a degree, a master's degree in nutrition. But he came in, he helped him out, uh, you know, make sure he's eating the right things and he's trying to, you know, make sure he's, he, he's as strong and in the best shape possible going into uh, fights. Uh, Canelo and um, I think he fought the other guy. I can't remember his name, but um, anyway, I did it for like two or three fights. He was his nutritionist. And Jacobs just didn't look that much, didn't look that much better. I think it was easier for them to cut, for him to cut the weight. I think having a nutritionist is easier for you to cut the weight, but I don't think it makes a difference come fight night, uh, except for you don't, you're not spending the last 24 hours, you know, not drinking, not eating, you know, still running and putting in road work and sweating and coming into the fight weaker than you would be. Um, you know, and then they have to hook up IVs to you and everything because you're dehydrated. And that puts you at a disadvantage. But at the end of the day, even if you have a nutritionist and you can avoid those pitfalls, if you if, it, if it's meant for you to lose, you're going to lose. If you're out good, you're out good. If you're out class, you're out class. It is what it is. So, so just the fact that people are saying that the nutritionist is going to be the difference in this fight between Spence and Ugas I'd have to say I don't think so, because both of them have nutritionists. Both of them ha are making the necessary changes in their camps for each for each other. I personally think, from watching them train, that Yugis um, Yugis is going to have to hit Spence with something early, over and over, to make Spence not come in behind that jab and high guard and not let his hands go. He's fighting out of that southpaw stance. He can hit really hard, but I think Spence, the first four rounds would be interesting, but I think after that, he just he just starts to just outwork him. I, it's just his, his work rate is just crazy. You know, he has an unbelievable engine, and I think that's going to be the difference in this fight. Now, honestly, I do. I like Yugis. I want him to win. I like his story. Um, you know, seeing him, how they try to do him with, as far as the WBA and Pacquiao and stripping him of his title and, you know, talking about giving it to Pacquiao and, you know, all that crap. You know what I'm saying? It's just really unfortunate, you know, to put him through that kind of stress because they were trying to set up something with Earl Spence and Pacquiao. And I get it, Pacquiao didn't lose the belt at that time, but they put him through unnecessary stress. And it caused a flare-up with his alopecia and he hasn't recovered since. And it's just a really sad, sad case, but... He's bounced back now, beat Pacquiao. He's in good spirits, and he's looking to get in there and unify those belts. And I think Yugas has a really good chance, but but he's going to have to find a way to, to, to just counter the work rate of Earl Spence. Earl, Earl Spence is relentless. If you watch when he trains, you listen to those shots, hit those mitts in that heavy bag, and just look at the work rate, it's it's unbelievable. If you watch Yugas, it's he almost like elementary in a sense, or what he's doing, but we know he's not an elementary fighter. We know Yugas is the real deal, and he can he he'll give anyone problems, and he can win a fight against any of the elite welterweights on any given day. But I just don't think the the bulking up is really going to help him if he can't land those shots. Earl Spence has a great defense. Um, Yugas has a great offense, but but Earl Spence isn't just there to catch. He'll catch, counter, slip. He'll make you pay with your mistakes. And I think Yugas, his style is going to, the first four rounds is going to make it a little interesting. But I think after that, Earl Spence pulls away. Um, nutri nutritionists and no nutritionists for Earl Spence, I think uh, both of these guys are going to um, get in there. And I think with them, with or without nutritionists in both camps, they will still perform. The outcome will still be the same. Uh, that being said, let me know your two cents. Let me know what you think. I'm not saying the nutritionists adds no value to the camp. That's not what I'm saying. I get it. It makes cutting weight easier. Uh, it makes to it the last couple of days of, of before the fight, you're not out there killing yourself trying to drop another 5, 10 pounds or 1 pound or 
0.5 pounds or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I get it. But I just don't think if you don't really have the skills to match up against your opponent, it doesn't matter what you have in your system, you're going to be in bad shape. And I'm talking strictly nutrition. We're not talking about the, 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 the Lewis Resto type stuff where, you know, there's no nutrition, nutrition that's involved in that tampering with gloves. We're not talking about Aaron Pryor of Wales where the black buckle, give me the black buckle. Panama had this black bottle and gave it to him and supposedly opened up his lungs and, and uh, enabled Aaron Pryor to come out there, you know, with a whole bunch of energy in the last couple of rounds and knock out a whale. And I believe Lewis Resto said the same thing. He had that bottle where they had something in there for like people with asthma. You break it up and shake it, you drink it, it opens up your lungs. I'm talking about just strictly the right diet, right supplemental strategy. I just think it's just not going to make that much of a difference on fight night, aside from not having to cut all that weight and be drained. But that being said, leave your two cents. Let me know your opinion on it. Shout out to all the veterans. Y'all have a good weekend. Stay safe. And as always, y'all in the breeze.